I want you to put your hands together for the one, the only Bishop Carlton Pearson. Hello everybody, Carlton Pearson right here in Tulsa, Oklahoma in the music room in my home. 
I've been hanging out under house arrest of ex officially like all Americans and getting some home arrest and being a little restless too, I think like everybody else, but I'm at peace in my heart. I wanted to, um, you to feel that song, Make a Joyful Noise. It was written by Anna Rains and directed by Alvin Frugia, now Pastor Alvin Frugia here in Owasso, just up north here of Tulsa. Great song. The scripture says that it is with joy that we draw water from the wells of salvation, salve, a healing ointment for the soul, the mind, the spirit. A lot of hurting people in America tonight, around the world as well. A lot of death, a lot of paranoia, a lot of doom, a lot of depression, a lot of uh, financial crisis. I want to minister to you tonight. Um, things are never as bad as they seem. They can always be worse. Never as good as they seem, and it can always be better. So we're going to find the middle place. And let's begin with making our heart happy. Think of the good things. Count your blessings. Not just checking all the curses that you feel that are on your life. Let's don't develop a victim consciousness. Rather than being victims of circumstances, we choose to be victors over them. And I could give you a long list of circumstances that I felt victimized by. I turn, re, I turn stress into stretch to my next level. And that's what we want to do uh, in this next few minutes as we share with you wonderful songs of Zion, even if in a strange land. Those of you who know the 137th Psalm know what I'm talking about. Recently, there was a special with the Clark sisters. We're gonna feature them tonight. I love the girls, all of them, very dearly. They're women, powerful women, strong women. Their mother, the late Maddie Moss Clark, was a dear friend of the Church of God in Christ, one of the, the, uh, the prominent figures in the spirituality of the movement during the years that she was in charge of the music department. She and Twinkie particularly, and those girls just took the convocations every year to where they needed to go spiritually and they are fixtures in our minds and we love them and celebrate them and millions of people saw the movie repeatedly and everybody's talking. So we're gonna celebrate those ladies tonight. I actually got to preach the final service, the official service in Maddie Moss Clark's last music convention at the UNAC service uh, in the Church of God in Christ, a UNAC uh, uh, week in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. She was sitting in a wheelchair there, had already, already the victim of, of some strokes that was her last music convention. She shortly thereafter made her transition into what we know is and believe is heaven for her. And so we want to celebrate all that. And this is a respiratory disease, this whole pen, this whole coronavirus. So we want to talk about spirit. Breathing, pneuma, breath, pneumon in Greek, pneumonia. Spirit, we want you to feel the spirit of God, the spirit of your own soul flowing and moving out of you. The word for, for, for voice is phone in Greek, phonics in English, the phonetics of spirit. I want you to feel the phonetics of your spirit and the spirit of eternal presence, divine mind, God flowing through you, out of you, around you, comforting you, consoling you. It is with joy that you draw from these waters and these wells of the south, the healing ointment of God. And relax tonight, release. Now let some things go. Let the tension go. The worry, the paranoia, the grief. We want you for the next several moments, really, I want these several moments to take you for a long way. We're going to repeat these specials for the next few weeks, perhaps, and just minister to you on Friday nights and just let you feel uh, that good old fashioned Pentecostal, classical Pentecostal cogent thing. Now I'm into new thought and expanded consciousness and my shock theology have shifted, but my spirit and the transcendence of my deep roots in the Church of God in Christ, and the Church of God in Christ has lost several of its prominent leaders and bishops. Some of the laity, there's a lot of confusion, there's a lot of paranoia, there's a lot of fear, there's a lot of depression. We want to pull you up tonight. We want to bring you up. We're going to snatch you up. Uh, you're going to hear Karen sing, take it by force in a minute, but uh, and, and, and that means you grab your peace, grab your um, um, solitude, grab yourself, your soul, your mind, grab it. Don't let it be stolen or taken or ripped from you by circumstances. We don't want to make a mountain out of a molehill. We don't want a period where God has just a comma or a semicolon. And we have to be careful even how we use those exclamation points and magnify and amplify things out of sorts. Things are never as bad as they seem. And they could always be worse. Same term, they're never as good as they seem and could always be better. 
We're going to help you find that happy middle these next few moments. Many of you are going to be healed tonight in your spirit as you listen to these songs. And we'll be back in just a moment right after you hear the one and only Karen Clark Sheard. Take it by force.
about you, but I think some of us need to get mad enough to just decide we're not going to take anything else from the devil. He's going to have to start taking stuff from us. When I say it from, I mean off the devil. How many of you know he just kind of plays games with your head and messes with your family and messes with your money and you just decided you've had all you're going to take and you're going home to run him completely out of town? I'm getting mine now. Come on, say I'm getting it now. Take it. Somebody take it. Take it. Come on. Grab it. Come on, grab it. Come on, grab it down. Snatch it down, everybody. If you need a miracle, snatch it down. If you need a healing, snatch it down. Whatever you need, finances. saw the movie, many of you saw for the first time things about the Clark's background, the sisters, uh, the pain, the pathos, the agonies that they went through. I remember the late great Catherine Kuhlman used to say, all the people see is the glory. They don't know the story, not really. You see us on stage, the bright lights, the crowds, but you don't know the price that's been paid. She also said to me one time, you don't have any idea the great price that's been paid for a ministry like this, Carlton. No one knows the great pain that I've gone through for this glory. Well, you're gonna see it, you're gonna sense it. Anything worth doing is worth fighting for fighting your way through it, finding your way, fondling, if you will. You have to hold your own spirit, your own self, and, 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 and grit your teeth and grind your teeth to make it through. Many of you are doing that right now. You don't know when or if your next paycheck is, is coming. Your, well, your Wi-Fi is going out. Your cell phone needs to be paid. You need to get that head D yet. <laughs> Those nails did, some of you ladies. Um, there's a lot of frustration out there. I understand it. You are going to make it through it. We all do. We all will. Again, we're on our way to heaven to meet the king. This is a song that Dorinda Clark sings that her mother wrote. Those saints used to say, I heard this song, had no idea Matt even wrote it. I'm on my way to heaven. They used to call, say, instead of saying king, the old saints would say the king. I'm running up to king's highway. Dorinda is the evangelist of the group and she's powerful. A very humble, dear, dear woman of God. And she's leading this song tonight. You're going to enjoy it richly. So feel that beat, feel that pneuma, feel your spirit. Come to that divine respiratory easy. Breathe easy, breathe deeply, inhale, exhale, relax. This too will pass. Be there. This song is a classic to me. And of course, I wanted to do this song because in memory of my mother, my mother, Dr. Maddie Moss Clark, who has paved the ground and laid the foundation, even in the church, Church of God in Christ. And I wanted to do this song. Is it all right, y'all? Some of y'all may know it. Everybody put your hands together. Come on. And some of y'all may know it. Just sing along with it.
One of the real rocks of the Clark sisters is Twinkie. Very humble, very sweet. She wrote most of the songs, arranged most of the songs, uh, played the keyboards, organ. She carried the Memphis Convocations many times. When she'd get on that organ, the whole energy in the room would shift. The preachers were looking for her, the bishops were looking for her, mother was looking for her, the girls were looking for her. And she's kind of an unsung hero, but she never wanted that. She didn't seem to ask for it or covet it. She just followed her mother, followed the leading of the Holy Spirit and wrote. There's deep wealth in Twinkie that uh, she doesn't talk a lot. She's real humble, and, but she has deep feelings, obviously some deep pain. And out of her pain and pathos came some songs that carried hurting people. This song that she does now, it's, it wasn't really scheduled for the night. Marvin Winan was preaching that night. Ronald Winan, who has since made his transition, in fact, he came out of a deep, he had been uh, unconscious for like three weeks when I went to see him in the hospital. And while I was in there, Bibi had just left. While I was in the room, Ron woke up because I was supposed to, to speak for his music conference in Detroit. And we had to put everything on, on um, hold because he, we almost lost him. He actually came, I called Bibi and said, see, you came and left and he, your brother was still out. I came in and he came back from the dead. <laughs> he woke up literally while I was in the room. He didn't realize he had been out for like three weeks. That was a miracle. And he lived s several years after that, but has since made his transition. But he was gonna sing for his brother as our featured singer. Twinkie was in the audience. When Twinkie is in the audience or Twinkie is in the room and you know it, you're not gonna let her get away. And she so humbly came up and uh, it was like Detroit came to Tulsa that night. It was Marvin and uh, uh, Ronald and BB um, and Twinkie, and they just stood up there spontaneously as they've done all their lives under the anointing of the Holy Spirit and just sang. The groaning and the, the moaning that you hear in this song is what many people are feeling right now, particularly those who are of the Kojic or Pentecostal persuasion. We spend a lot of time on our faces. What you hear her doing, many of you watching may not understand it, but most of you will. It is your innermost being expressing, sometimes exploding inside of us. In a, with tears and groaning. The Bible talks about praying in the Holy Ghost, groaning which, with speech that battles, uh, that, that, that baffles speech to utter, or sounds that baffle speech to utter. It's the deep utterance and deep unctions of the soul. We don't know what to pray for as we ought, but the Holy Ghost makes intercession for us, the scripture says, with groanings that cannot be uttered. You get to the place where you don't know what to say. You don't even know what to pray. So you just groan and she does this classically. It's powerful. So enter in with her and, uh, and feel the pain and the pathos. And this is what took her through. This is what gets us through. When you're brought up the way I'm brought up, this language, all this, I haven't forgotten any of it. And I, some people might be more quiet and just sit in, in, in I call myself a metacostal. So I, I have Pentecostalism, but I've embraced metaphysics. I believe Jesus was a metaphysician. I believe Bishop Mason was a metaphysician. That means just passing the physics or the physical into the spirit. And Bishop Mason would talk, he could preach about a chicken or about a bird or a stick, a stone. He was a metaphysician. Jesus was the same way. And you're gonna feel that in this song. You may not understand everything, but you, if you just close your eyes and just kind of rock and roll with it. Uh, some of you, I don't have to tell you whether you know exactly where we're going with this, and you're going to feel it and enjoy it in your spirit. This is Twinkie leading us spontaneously with the Winding Brothers, just gets up behind her, and it's so special to me. It's one of those echoes, a sound out of the past. If you're a transcendental meditationist, you might just get in your yoga position <laughs> and just rock and be quiet and let them make the sound. If you're, you, some of you will want to get up and get on your knees. Some of you will cry during this period. You, you'll feel it. But I think it's therapeutic for the soul. So I wanted you to heal, hear, hear this and feel it tonight with the one and only Twinkie Clark. We love you so much, Precious. We love uh, uh, God. We love good. We love the Holy Ghost. Let's go back a minute. Twinkie and the Winding Brothers.
will just moan and groan a little bit. Mm, he understands it all. Ooh, 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 ooh. When you hurt it on the inside, the Lord will. Ooh, one more time. One, 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 one more time. Ooh, ooh, ooh. See, I think if those worldly singers can say, ooh, ooh, baby, I love you. I can say, ooh, Jesus, you're so sweet to me. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, if you really love the Lord, won't you lift your hand? Oh, my God. 
She ends with a yes, yes. And there comes a time when you just have to completely surrender to conditions and situations and circumstances over which you have no control. You can't control the cir circumstances, but you can control your response to it. I like what Wayne Dyer says, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. You just say yes. That's the theme, the anthem of the Church of God in Christ that was presented to by its founder, Bishop Charles Harrison Mason. He didn't actually wrote it, he just sang it. It just came out of his spirit. And we've been singing it every, every since. Our hands go up, sometimes tears stream down our faces when we think of what we say yes to. Of how all the things I've gone through in my life, at the most difficult moments, I would just say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Say it. Mean it, see it, feel it. We'll get through this. Just say yes. Mm, I still feel it. There's an echo. <laughs> There's a deja vu. Glory to God. Now comes the one and only John P. Key, one of my dearest, closest friends. He is the most committed. This guy never abandoned me on any circumstances. My son has traveled with him the last year as a videographer all over this country. John is John. He just, he's rich in his spirit. He's, he's, he was a street thug. And in the same city and town of Charlotte where he grew up, he has now uh, built a, a major impacting ministry. He's one of the most benevolent, generous. I've never been in a John P. concert when he didn't give money away, as much as $1,000. He came to Azusa every year. I would pay him an honorarium like every other singer. He never let me pay. He would always actually write the conference a check or send something. He wouldn't let me pay. He's just a generous spirit like that. So now he's singing one of his songs uh, that he wrote and he's got his singers with him. I've known, John has been here to my church. He sang one time in a, in a night when there was a tornado just a few miles down. It hit two mile, a few miles down the down Memorial and they were in my, my church. I was out of town and John went on with the con con uh, concert. The place was jammed and packed. And of course, the glory and clarity of the Lord is in the room. This is John P. Key singing live at Azusa. And uh, you're going to really love it and feel it and enjoy this great song. One, two, three.
Now here's my version of the same lyric in a different style, the Kojic style that I was raised with. And John knows that same style. And it's live in the Zeus of Two. Watch this, feel it, hear it, enjoy it. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Come on. Jesus, I'll never forget what you set me free. Well, now, Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me. It was in April of 1977. God began to speak to me. And I sort of went off into a little sleep and I saw Bishop Mason walk in the room, my, my bedroom. Now mind you, the man died in 1971. I was in uh, 1961. I was born in 1953. He came to San Diego once and I wasn't even 10 years old. I might have been six or seven. I don't remember the year he came. So I saw him and the place was so packed. They took, as soon as he walked in, they took all the children out. So I just had a very slight glance of him. They took the children out so the adults could see, sit. That's all I saw of Bishop Mason. But I heard him pray. I heard that album when I was a little boy. It was a 78. My mom and dad had it in our home. Now they've come out with various cassettes. But I heard it just before my grandmother died. I used to get up every morning at 9 o'clock. Every morning early before the bus came to get us. And go into the den. And I would dress in the den with an electric heater in the country. And listen to him pray and Mahalia Jackson sing. I dreamed that I went to a city called heaven. Shirley Caesar was singing. And we'll go sweeping through that city. All those, she had those little 45s. I was listening to all that music. And I'd leave the, my, my den and run across. Sometimes I'd be in there so overcome with weeping. And I'm telling you, a nine-year-old boy. I'd be so overcome with weeping till I'd forget to go to the bus stop. The bus would come down to where our house was on the corner and toot the horn and I'd run out there. 
with my eyes puffy and red. And I told them kids, I got to whip them because I didn't want them to know I was praying. <laughs> Isn't that something? Well, in 1977, he walked in my room at the close of the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the day, sat on the foot of my bed in this dream. And he spoke to me all night long. And early in the morning, just before the sun arose, he got up and quietly walked out. And just as he disappeared through the doorway, he turned to me and he, he made this statement. Remind the saints of the hope. And I woke up out of my sleep. And that's the only thing I remember him saying. I don't know what else he said. But I remember him saying, remind the saints of the hope. All of these songs that we're singing. We're dealing with a generation, listen to me clear, clearly. Who is coming out of, come out of Egypt, wandering in the wilderness. Many wilderness wanderers will not enter the land of promise. They don't understand the music. They don't understand the style. They don't understand the culture. And God is concerned about them, that element of the saints. He said, remind them of the hope. Because they feel lost. Many of their great leaders have passed away. Those old bishops and preachers and state mamas and district missionaries and praying mamas, they're all gone. And if they were here, they would not understand a lot of what's going on today. Many of them are depressed and weary. So the Lord said, remind the saints of the hope. He spoke that through that dream. But I believe God is using these songs... And the spirit in these songs, most of whose authors we cannot find, these songs, to remind that little mama that all she knows how to do is groan. She's not going to understand Greek and Hebrew. She's not going to understand this new theology, this liberation theology. She's not, she's not going to understand uh, a Kirk Franklin song. And she might not even understand some of Fred's songs. And she not, might not understand some of Alvin's songs and some of the new songs that we all enjoy so much. They don't relate to it all together. So we reach back and just hold their hand. They won't cross over. They're not ready to go over. They're not ready for war. They still have a slave mentality because they were slaves and they prayed us through they were midwives to this generation are you hearing me it's only becoming clearer to me now what god meant what he said through that vision and vision with bishop mason remind the saints of the whole nudge somebody and say i'm here to remind you of the whole all is not lost your best days are yet to come Hallelujah. So we had to sing songs like this. I know the Lord will make a way. Yes, he will. You ever heard that one? God by the name. I know the Lord will make a way. Oh, yes, he will. me and for you the Lord will see you safely through I know the Lord yeah yeah will make a way oh yes he will I know he will I think he will I know the Lord Say he's singing that one for me. Come on. Say that's my song. And I know the Lord will make a way. Oh yes, he will. Yeah, he'll make a way for me and for you. Jesus will see. Takes us all the way back to the sixties. Yes, oh yes, yes he will. Yes he will. Yes he will. Well, yes. I know. Yes he will. Yes he will. Yes he will. Oh yes, he will.
remember hearing that song, I Know the Lord Will Make a Way, as a kid. I mean, elementary school age. I heard it many, many, many times. And that's one of the songs that is, is infinite. I know the Lord through all the different personal situations that I've gone through. And different people's backgrounds informs their foreground. Mine is classical, evangelical, conservative Christianity, Pentecostalism, speaking in tongues, running and hollering, jumping, crying, praying through, pressing, very transcendent in so many ways, as well as transformational. It really transformed my life. But I learned it early, and so I never went through a lot of you know, rabbit holes and rabbit trails trying to get to where I am now. But to use the old language, the Lord has always made a way for me. We're now going to uh, present to you another one of the spontaneous moments in Azusa, and that's what I liked most about spontane spontaneity. Not who I invited, but who showed up. And somebody handed me a note that said Walter Hawkins, who has now made his transition, along with his brother Ed Hawkins, dear, dear, powerful men. And they were good friends of Andre, who was a good friend of mine. I grew up with his uncle as my presiding bishop in Southern California, Samuel Crouch. So anyway, I invited Walter to come to the stage. He graciously came and he wasn't planning to. I don't even really think he wanted to. He didn't want anybody to know he was there. He didn't announce that his presence. He had been coming to the conference and I didn't know it. <clears throat> anyway, he comes up on the stage and he and Donnie spontaneously, totally unrehearsed, sing this song. It just blesses the house. It was powerful. It was a real divine flow. And of course, so uh, Walter and Edwin Hawkins are icons in the music ministry and the gospel music because they took it with the old happy day to the world. That's one of the first times gospel music became globally attractive, globally uh, important. Andre was rejected, he and Sandra, by the Church of God in Christ because we thought he was too worldly. But the Assemblies of God recognized this anointing and sent him in the mission field with them. And that's how Andre and Sandra became world known with Andre's music. All this divine synchronicity occurs. Everything happens as it ought to. The rejection in one place is a reception in another. One door closing here, another door opening somebody someplace else. Some of you may lose jobs. That means something better is for you. Not bitter. You don't have to get bitter. You can get better. So you're going to feel that. This song is titled, Thank You, Lord. This is a time to, as Twinkie ended hers with thank you. Here it is again. Be thankful. Be grateful. Count your blessings, not your curses. Don't make a list of the curses. But be aware of the causes that whatever happens and the causes in your life that make you who you are and who you are becoming. This is a wonderful experience that I am happy to share with you tonight. The one and only Walter Hawkins and Donnie McClurkin, live at Azusa. Tragedies are commonplace, all kinds of diseases, people are slipping away. Economy's down, people can't get enough pay. As for me, all I can say, Lord, is thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Folks yeah. without home. Living in the streets, drug habits, some say, they just can't be. Mothers and robbers, no place seem to be safe. You've been my protection every step of the way. I want to say.
We're going to close this and I want you to reclaim, recall, reconnect with your original essence, the echo of the sound that announced your arrival on this planet whenever your birthday was, however long that was. And that, that echo has caught up with you. Sound travels only 1,100 feet, where sound, light travels 180,000 180, miles per second. Sound's only 1,100 feet per second, so it takes a while for sound to reach up to you, for that echo, for that, that uh, the word, the scripture says faith comes by hearing. That is a kuo, acoustics, music, from musing, thinking. All this is combining to arrive at where we are right now in consciousness, awareness, conscience, conscientia, with knowledge. Science means knowledge. And so trees, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. There's a science to good and evil. They're not opposites. They are comrades. They work together. So um, let's purify our thinking and start all over again. I'm going to close the program with uh, Azusa in Atlanta, we t in the east, and Azusa in L.A. At, the at that time, the largest physical church building in the country, the Faith Dome, built by, the, by uh, the great Fred Price. We went out there and packed the church three nights in a row, turned a couple thousand away a night. We also were in Atlanta at the great Cathedral of the Holy Spirit, built by the late, great Bishop Earl Polk. Um, if you've ever seen um, Green Leaf, the, 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 the church services are in that building which he built. And I was walking with him through his brother, Don and Clarice, who designed it. Um, we had an Azusa there. It was packed again every night. All almost, we had to actually put in extra chairs. We had like 7,500, 8,000 a night. Glorious. Thing. So we end with all the glory of his presence. That song touches me every time I hear it, every time I sing it. I used to, that's the last, last song I normally sing before I preached at my church here at Higher D. And then we cut away to Andres, Bless the Lord, all my soul, in Los Angeles. So all those wonderful memories are just going through my spirit uh, tonight and during this special time of transition. We're not in trouble in America and the world. We're in transition. We must make the change, manage the change, and ultimately master change. So you're in a good place. Relax, bless the Lord, all oh, your soul, and let, your, let the glory and the presence and the clarity come as residually as it will. And it will. We'll see our way through this. I believe the best is yet to come. Tune in again next time. We will have another hour-long special, and we'll include Donnie and the Winans and Shirley Caesar and all the music that we had, Yolanda Adams, we got all that at Azusa. We're going to share it with you just to refresh your spirit with these Azusa Remind the Saints of the Hope uh, specials. I love you. I believe in you. I believe in America. I believe in the world. I believe the creation and the creator has a plan and we're all part of it, especially right now. God bless you. I always like to say God be you. See you next time. Oh, the glory. All this Oh, I feel such an anointing stand and everybody sing. Oh, the glory. Come on, get on your feet and sing it. Of His presence. We, your temple, give you reverence.
soul. And I will bless the Lord. Oh, my soul, come on. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Let's go!